We're here at St Ives Medieval Fair. My name is Matt, I'm from Night for Hire, and we're going to do a tour of the St Ives Medieval Fair village encampments. At the St Ives Medieval Fair, you have over 300 reenactors this weekend that have set up a medieval village, as you can see around us. And there's lots of people in period costumes doing the work that was required to keep a medieval village running. We have everything from the 14th century all the way through to the early Middle Ages. And so today we want to have a few interviews so you can see the people behind the work that makes the entertainment for you guys really, really clear. So we're here with Greg um, in the company of Cro the Cross Encampment at St Ives Medieval Fair and we're just going to have a quick chat about why it is you do what you do. So what makes reenactment so interesting to you? I think there's a part of it where we're historians, but look, everyone is born as a little kid with that fascination of the knight in armour, the archers, bow and arrows. And when I was a kid, I think I said sword and armour before I learnt to say mum and dad. Oh, well, it makes, I, it, I, makes it really simple, doesn't it? We can just put on the armour and we get to beat up our friends and it's lots and lots of that's fun. That's exactly right. Yeah. How often do you get to get together every second weekend and beat the snot out of your mates? Exactly. It's, and so, so we spend the weekend, so I'm with Phoenix and we're camping in the same encampment this year. Um, we've got our cook fire going and you guys have yours going. It's a little bit different though. You guys don't portray, so I dress up on the nobleman's gear. What kind of period do you portray or what kind of social status yeah. do you portray? Well, we're a mid to late 15th century mercenary group, so we're English. Yep. Uh, we're employed by uh, a historical character, John of Scrope, the 5th Earl of Bolton, and he fought with Richard III at Bosworth and many other battles. Okay. And we are employed by him, so we're fighting with the Orcist army. That's what we're representing. We're lower class, I wear full armour, but I'm not a knight. No, well in the 15th century you didn't have to be a knight. No, to have so full I actually armor. I'm actually the son of a mason. That's actually where my family comes from. Okay. Tra we track back to the 15th century. Yep. But I've gone out as a soldier. I didn't want to break rocks for a living. I've earned money, I've got wealthy, I've got enough money to hire my own men and hire ourselves out. And, and that's so how they raised up. These are the men that you've hired. Yep. So our a... camp represents purely a military camp. There's Fantastic. no noble blood here. No, absolutely not. When I cross the border, it's all a bit shunned. <laughs> <laughs> now, where at St Ives Medieval Fair, what makes St Ives special to you? What's, what's great about this particular festival? For me, St Ives, it comes down to the level of passion. There's, there's great festivals all over Australia, but at St Ives, it's the historical accuracy. It's the campsites. You don't see uh, any plastic ware, you don't see any modern marquees. Everyone's eating with period gear, they're cooking period food, right down to the kids running around in period shoes. Yeah. At some of the other fairs, you've got guys in armour wearing Blundstone work boots. Yeah. You won't see that here. No. Everyone's got the right gear, and that's just wonderful to see that level of passion. It is, and the council's been really good at restricting that down, haven't they? Absolutely, it's, it's and been... it's, it's one of the reasons why we've done everything we can to support this fair, because you need that. And look, you need the other fairs for the people that don't quite have that level. Yeah. Fine. But here, this is something unique. Yeah, exactly. We all start somewhere with reenactment. So it's, Absolutely. It's a, it's a hard hobby to get into for some people. Um, if you don't want to make stuff yourself, it costs, costs a lot of money. But if you learn how to do stuff yourself, it can actually be quite cheap, just labour intensive. Labour intensive. And yeah. this is not a cheap sport. To no. do it at this level, this is not a cheap sport. There's thousands of dollars worth of equipment here in this campsite. Yeah. And, and you look around St Ives, there's millions of dollars yeah. worth of equipment. What is there at St Ives that you think the public should come and see? Obviously yourselves, because there's a great weapons and armour yep. display that you do. You, the talk that you do with the public is fantastic, which is why we put you right at the front, because we want to be able, people to be able to come and chat to you as much as possible. What else do you think there is at St Ives that it, really... It, look, th there's no doubt about it. The, the crown, the jewel in the crown at St Ives is the tilt. Yes. It's the jousting. You've got heavy horse. You've got guys in full period tilting armour. At some of the other fairs, the guys are wearing foot harness and, and period gear that doesn't really match up and it's great and it, there's all levels for everything. But this is the only place in Australia you're going to see guys in full heavy harness, solid timber lances, iron coronels on the end, hitting heads. It's great stuff. Yeah, the head is a target. The head is a is really a good, fun, yeah, fun so thing to watch. We've had knights unhorsed. We've had, uh, you know, guys, it's real. Yeah. It's life. You want to see jousting? This is the place to see it. 
This is the jewel in the crown for St. Ives. Well, that's why we come all the way from Brisbane. I'm glad you guys come from where you're coming to, to be here with I, us. I can't miss it. I go over and watch the Dowsing. Yeah, it's today. fantastic. Yeah. All right, well, thanks, Greg. Uh, my pleasure, mate. All and right. Hopefully many years to come. Thanks, Cross guys. Enjoy your breakfast. <laughs>